Hey, it's uh, Stephen Van Camp and Lewis, and it is July 26th on a wonderfully overcast day. Um, overcast and, and it's even rainy, so I'm kind of I'm filming this between rain showers today, which is really unusual for here in Central Texas. But whenever a, a hurricane affects the Texas coast, us here in the middle of the state. Uh, tend to be like this because you know this is the hottest driest part of uh, hottest driest time of the year and so any rain is very welcome we've gotten close to an inch today so uh, the plants are happy uh, not only the guys behind me and the catacetums over here but my whole garden um, my tomatoes and, and my natives and my uh, hummingbird garden and butterfly garden etc everything uh, is looking really crispy uh, anyway the topic of today that I want to talk to you about is is twofold, actually. I'm going to do an update on um, both the emergency deflasking that I showed you uh, towards the end of May and to see how those guys are doing. Uh, long story short, they're doing very well. And then I also want to take a trip over here where my catacetums are doing uh, doing pretty well, actually, and, and, and growing through the summer. Um, I'll show you some some roots and some spikes and some big fat happy plants. So um, now, first of all, you know, I'll provide a link at the end of this uh, video for the original emergency deflasking. But basically, I got a flask in the mail of of very small seedlings that were probably not ready to be deflasked. But after about um, uh, a couple of weeks of sitting in my windowsill, uh, I noticed some some really big fungus spots, and I'll show show you some pictures here. Um, and so I had to pull these guys out and, and do the best that I could. And what I did is I created uh, it's Cattleya hardiana, by the way, which is a Varsavixii by Doiana. Um, I created this thing, and you can see here. I got the Hardiana label and, um, and various labels. And then below um, are the holes where the, the water well is allowed to collect. So it's kind of like, it's almost like PET. I've got the inorganic media here on the bottom, the EcoWeb, and then I have Cypress mulch here on top. Uh, I didn't use sphagnum. I, I considered using sphagnum, but um, I don't know. Sphagnum just, you know, I, I've been growing for like 30 years and sphagnum is still kind of not super great for me but the the cypress mulch has done very very well and as you can see whoops i'm dumping water out here as you can see my little tiny seedlings that were probably too small to be deflasked are doing really well um i had three die you know early on and, and that's pretty much it um so let me show you here real quick. It's probably easier to just show you like this. Um, so you can see a whole lot of little happy green babies. You see a ton of roots in there. Um, as you can see, the media is, is wet all the time. Um, and so I want to talk to you a little bit about what I've done, you know, why this has been successful. Um, and why I'm very optimistic for the future for these guys. Um, so basically, I, I had a little plastic lid that I kept on top, uh, very loosely, and this was for the first week or two. Um, and then after those initial weeks of, of, of maintaining 100% humidity in there, and of course the fact that I have a water well here on the bottom means that it's always humid in there, and the, um, the cypress mulch is, is, is wet most of the time as well. After about two weeks of having a lid on there, I would crack it a little bit and maybe have a little bit open like this. And then after another week, maybe that crack got a little bigger and I kept it like that until eventually uh, after, I don't know, uh, maybe a month, I started taking the lid off. So basically I had this, I have this in my windowsill and um, uh, you know, every time I would walk by it, I would either take the lid off or put the lid back on. So the lid wasn't necessarily totally off for more than a couple hours per day. And then eventually now I just have it off completely. And as, as I showed you, 
uh, the roots are are just going crazy. Um, I have a little spray bottle that I'm spraying this with. I'm not growing these outside. It is just too hot to have a sort of little enclosed greenhouse. So um, I'll show you a picture right now of, of my setup. And basically I have a, a, an LED across the top. It's at a windowsill and uh, there's a timer set for 12 hours a day and it's just, it's just growing there and, and doing really well. Um, you know, uh, about three weeks after I got this flask, I got another flask from a friend in Louisiana and they got tumbled around in the mail and I, I've heard, um, I've never really seen it, but I, I've heard that when the media coats the leaves, it can actually burn the leaves. So I was like, well, I'm, I'm gonna leave these guys as is until I start to see leaf burn. Um, I went for a couple weeks and then the leaves started to die off. So I did the exact same thing with this group. And this is a Myrmecophilia thompsoniana. Uh, again, it's the same kind of a bottle. Got eco web down here on the bottom, cypress mulch on top, and babies. Um, and I'll show you this real quick as well. It, it's a very similar scene to the last one. But these seedlings were a little easier to deal with. Um, they were large enough, almost large enough to be pulled out of the flask. So deflasking them was less of a of an ordeal. Um, plus, you know, the, the lessons learned from the Cattleya hardiana uh, made this very easy. Um, but you can see there's a little more dead material in here. You can see all those old leaves really died off. And but you still see lots of roots. And they're growing well. So I would say out of that batch, you know, I would say more, well over half survived. And there was, there was a ton in there. There's still a ton in here. I probably don't need this many. Um, but anyway, that's my emergency deflasking update. Let's go take a look at the catacetums. I was walking back inside and I just realized that I didn't tell you guys how I'm watering and fertilizing um, the, the young catleas and myrmecophilias. Um, basically, I'm using rain, rainwater, and whenever they start to crisp up or the, the water in the water well starts to go down, um, I'll add more rainwater. Um, I also spray on top. I've got a little hand spray that I can use and do use, you know, a couple times a week probably just to keep things dry, excuse me, wet. Um, when I see the roots starting to get really white, even if the, the media is still pretty wet, I'll, I'll, I'll spritz them with water a little bit. I'm also using, um, you know, some Kelp Max and that other bacterial supplement um, from Ray Barkalo over at First Ray's Orchids, and I use that once a month. You know, a, a sort of a, a, a mild dilute so solution, um, not quite full strength, but not not a half strength either. It's it's somewhere in between, um, and they seem to like it. Um, and that's about it. And like I said, they're also under uh, artificial lights in the window with a timer and it seems to be working pretty well. All right, as you guys know, I grow all of my catacetums using the PET method. And of course that includes having um, this sort of bottle here, or on the bottom is, is an inorganic media. Um, I use EpiWeb or EcoWeb, and then I've got some large grade bark here in the middle and then uh, on the top, I was using sphagnum, but I've since changed up my formula. So um, I'm going to show you some plants and then talk about my new formula a little bit. But basically, I mean, these things are, are just monstrous. Some of my larger plants are doing really well. You can see here's another spike on this plant. I think that's the second or third one. I've got another spike down here. And when we go around to the other side, other side you'll see some, some other spikes. But basically, um, it's all doing really well. You know, everything, even the late, the late growers, um, like this guy, you know, I started watering a little, a lot later than I was hoping to, and even the roots weren't big enough, in my opinion, but it's still chugging along, doing well. Um, some of my other ones had stalled out because they'd been left dry too long. And so I just said, you know, screw it. I'm going to start watering basically everybody. And it's worked out really well. 
Um, over here, we can see some roots. That's the cool thing about the, um, the PET method in the clear bottles is you can see roots and roots, and really nice roots. And there's some more over here. Oh, and here's a huge one. I haven't seen this one yet. It's kind of fun to get down close to these guys and really see what they're doing. Like that is just awesome. That's a happy plant. Who are you? That's that Tenebrosum by Colosum that I, uh, I had a first bloom on about a month ago. I'll show a picture of that, but it is just cranking. Um, I've got some female flowers that are on the way out here. This is my tabulari that I got from my friend Tim in Pennsylvania some years ago. And then uh, Catacetum Black Knight is, is spiking again here for the second time this season. And I'll probably get another spike even still after this. But back to my new formula for PET, and I will eventually make a video talking about it, but basically I made it simpler and cheaper. So let's see, which one do I want? Which one's easiest to see? Let's look at this guy. So uh, I still have the, the inorganic media on the bottom but instead of doing large grade orchiata here in the middle, which is expensive, and then sphagnum here on top, which is also expensive, I'm just using cypress mulch. Um, cypress mulch in my part of the world is crazy cheap. It's just landscaping stuff, and it's, you know, cypress, as you may or may not know, is a tree, and for whatever reason they turn it into mulch, I assume it's a byproduct, but uh, it is really, uh, really, really good. I, I know some some growers in the southern part of the United States who use this instead of um, the sort of expensive mulch that we use or that I grew up using. Um, and so far, so good. You know, I don't see any poor plants. I don't see poor results um, yet. So far, so good. So, uh, and to be honest what inspired me to switch up the PET method is Bernie Butts in Canada. He kind of modified the PET method um, to be uh, cocoa, coconut choir. So he has the inorganic media on the bottom and then the coconut choir on top and that's it. And I said, well, hey, if, if he only needs two layers then I, I can play around with only two layers. And you know, so far so good, I'm pretty happy with it. Everything looks great. Everything's doing really well. This is one of my older plants, not older, but uh, this is another one, one of my plants that was potted in sphagnum. As you can see, it's doing just fine. This is a Catacetum shunkii. Uh, this is one of the imports. This has bloomed for me twice this season. I got a new little growth popping out here. Um, so everything's doing really well. So. Uh, that's my Catacetum and, and Catalea emergency flasking update. Um, as always, if you enjoyed this video, give me a like, share, subscribe, etc. And my cat Dallas and I will sign off and say until next week. Bye-bye.